Welcome here to the Francis Crick Institute, uh, at the largest of its kind in Europe, a spectacular building. HOK with our colleagues from PLP really had to look to the future and look at what research was all about and how it would transform itself. What we looked at in terms of the design was simplicity, clarity, how it was positioned. Uh, it's located in, in a terrific location in terms of connectivity and a way to respond to what might happen in the future. Immediately after we moved here in December, the advantages of being in this very well connected and central location became abundantly clear. We're now minutes away from our collaborators. We can, we can walk there. That would, never would have happened before. A particular bonus for us is that our colleagues are very attracted to come and visit us and we can just stay put and the, the collaborators are coming to us. The Crick certainly had its guiding principles to pursue discovery without boundaries. And that was all about new public and private partnerships. Collaborating collectively, people could work together in a wide range of circumstances. So not only formally in the labs, but in the breakout spaces, so the teams are not siloed. So I now work with and talk to a broader range of scientists from a broader range of disciplines and backgrounds than I ever have done in my previous uh, life as a researcher. Um, I think this is particularly valuable as in the past my best ideas have come from um, having conversations with people who have a different perspective from working in a different area of research. The sky bridges were intentionally put in in case you needed lar larger labs to do particular research, creating a level of flexibility within the building that could foresee how people would do research in science. Within the Institute itself, there really are greater opportunities for scientific collaborations um, emerging. Here at the Crick, we have these technology platforms um, where they have specialists in all the different technologies um, available for any Crick scientists to use. Really, when you look at the building as an edifice, it's really the power of harnessing the intellect that goes into the building that really makes the building what it is. I've worked with um, technical specialists and techniques um, such as mass spectrometry and flow cytometry, which are these massive, powerful technologies that allow you to generate huge amounts of data to help you analyze and um, help you answer your scientific questions. In the coming weeks, I'm getting to drive an electron microscope, which is something that I never would have thought I would get my own hands on. One of the guiding principles was creating future science leaders. No one can be here longer than 12 years before they have to go back out into either academia or into the industry. That is something that's uniquely special about the Crick. Acceleration for, for health and wealth, how you get that science to the marketplace as well. And that's why you'll see a number of labs that are sponsored by private industry and yet the intellectual capital resides with the Crick and engaging and inspiring the public and arguably that might be the most important one. In this very space, the Crick has twice opened its doors to the public for um, hands-on science outreach events, which have involved probably over 100 research scientists and Crick staff um, coming together to showcase the, the science that we're doing here and to hopefully inspire um, the next generation of scientists who might one day come and work within these walls. I've been the project architect for the building for over six and a half years. I've seen the building through its uh, incarnations. I think it's been the one of the most amazing buildings I've ever worked on. I've been fortunate to work on uh, two other amazing buildings, but this has been the most complex building that I've ever worked on. I think the major challenge was so so absolutely bloody massive. Um, so um, so how do you fit something so huge? into a quite tight urban grain. Yes, it's next to a major station, um, but even in relation to something of the monumentality of St Pancras, it, it's, it, it matches up with that. Uh, and that was quite a challenge. I've been involved in buildings for over 30 years, but I don't think I've ever been involved in a project like this uh, before. One of the best things I've ever heard a client say it was what Sir Paul Nurse said, one of the most respected scientists in the country. And I quote, sometimes I look at what's been achieved here and I can't quite believe it. To actually produce what is probably the most advanced and interesting and exciting biomedical research lab in the world, a cathedral of science that will push back the boundaries of our understanding. When you look around the building, when you see 1,500 people actually working in a building of this size and scale in a, an urban site, it's pretty remarkable. I'm absolutely stunned by the 
beauty of the building, seeing this delivered from the plans that I used to see back in 2011, it's absolutely fantastic. I think the fact that um, you have such amount of light that comes into the atrium, um, it's obvious there's a very high standard of, of design that runs through this building. There's a real genuine interest in making sure that the local community are involved in what's happening here in terms of the Summerstown estate and elsewhere in King's Cross and Camden because obviously there's a lot of pockets of deprivation in Camden and it, it's very important that we should uh, raise aspirations and attainment levels for young people who might want to work in this type of industry. I think the building encapsulates what makes cities work, what makes London work, um, which is putting a lot of intelligent people together in a place at the same time, swapping ideas, inspiring new ideas, that co-working kind of ethos. You simply do not get a more technically complex building type than this. This is the apogee of technical building. We want to show what we have done. This is a project that the entire city and the entire country should be proud of. This building will be the, uh, the centrepiece for research of the future.